guys, it's Gwen, and today I'm making Six's raincoat from Little Nightmares. We're actually in the middle of making our second Little Nightmares musical, so I have made Six's coat before. The first time we just purchased a cheap one and then I spent five minutes with a hot glue gun trying to make the hood a little bigger. It didn't work super well, it was falling apart by lunchtime, and we did throw it out a few months ago. I'm gonna need a new one. To start, I needed a lot of yellow fabric, and thankfully I had this giant Pikachu sitting around being adorable. I thought the ears would work great as sleeves and the body seemed like just the right size, so I took it to... Oh. Well, maybe I should use this convenient pile of fabric thread and buttons instead. You know, just to get them off my floor. I also used this pattern, which is just a simple bell-shaped coat. I had actually used it before when I made Little Misfortune's coat two-ish years ago, so the pattern pieces are already cut out and I can pretend that I read the instructions before while I blatantly ignore them. Pretty sure that's what I did last time. I got two kinds of fabric, some thick fabric to give the coat its shape and some thin fabric that I just like the feel of better. I cut my pattern pieces out of the thick fabric with a few adjustments because rebellion is fun and I promise you it turned out better this way. Then I cut twice as many pieces out of the thin stuff. One set of thin pieces I made exactly like the thicker ones and the other set I made an inch bigger on all the outside edges. If you're not sure which edges are the outside edges, I suggest staring, thinking, pointing until you figure it out. And if you're wondering how I put all this fabric on the floor without luring a single cat to the scene, they were both busy bird watching. You know, the fifth law of feline dynamics. Where your open window is, there shall your cat be also. Or is that a verse from Second Catechus? Anyway, I cut some big rectangles for pockets and pocket flaps, and when I was done, I had six back pieces, six front pieces, six sleeve pieces, and six pocket pieces. And if you think I did that on purpose because it's Six's coat, no, I didn't even notice until I was recording this, but now I'm laughing. If you're a different kind of person and just adding that all up to 24 and thinking that's way too many pieces for one coat, you're wrong, but you're also right. So I pinned the six larger thin pieces flat against their matching thick pieces so we could all pretend there are half as many. And I also just pretended that the other pieces didn't exist because they weren't important right now. I pinned the pocket rectangles together, folded the edge of the thin fabric over the top and sewed it down, then pinned them to the coat front with the pocket flaps right on top. The next day the window was closed so Mr. Meowth came to supervise while I sewed the sides of the pockets to the coat and then, well, he was too disruptive so he put himself in time out in the corner. He's a very polite little fellow. I took my two back pieces, the big pieces with no pockets now, pinned them together and sewed them into place. I pinned both coat fronts to the back, at the sides and at the shoulders, which officially makes the coat into one piece, if we continue to ignore those other pieces like we should. And I promise you, it really did happen that fast. There were no tricks, no magic, no fairy dust, no... Did anybody else hear that? Hello. Gwen's been turned into the black cat. <laughs> oh no! A curse! Well, this is awkward. Once I got my thumbs back and the coat was all pinned together, I sewed all four seams as I had pinned them and started in on the sleeves. Mr. Meowth decided supervising just wasn't for him and instead challenged me to pin both sleeves into tubes with one hand. Sort of. Probably more like one and a half hands? I don't know. I, I thought I was cheating at first, but he didn't seem to mind, and when I was done, he rewarded me by stealing the sleeves for himself. I take back everything I said about him being polite. He's adorable, but he's the worst. I sewed both sleeves, then folded the extra fabric at the hem over and pinned it, then stretched, danced, conducted an imaginary orchestra. I don't think this was that important. I sewed the extra fabric down and AJ arrived with gifts. Chocolate, chocolate for me. I'm uh, watching a show called The Great. Is it historical? Yeah. <laughs> How did you know? Only historical people are great. The rest of us are mediocre. <laughs> Well, Catherine the Great. I don't follow her. <laughs> I'm fairly certain she was Princess Anastasia's either grandmother or great grandmother. Mm -hmm. I don't remember which. That's a lie. I had several more greats in there. I have a weird question for you. How does one fake their death and use a different body to be discovered as their body? You want this other body <laughs> to be ID'd as you. <laughs> so you don't exist because they found your body, but it's not your body. <laughs> Like, I know how we got here, but also this is really weird. Like, where are the steps? Actually, I had no idea how we got here. 
See, I assumed that since I had mentioned Anastasia Romanova, who, let's face it, is pretty much only famous for being a Romanov and being THE Romanov whose death might have been faked, that AJ had jumped from her to a random thought bubble about how to fake your own death. But the next time I saw AJ around the house, he was like, I bet you have lots of questions. And I was like, mm, not really. I mentioned Princess Anastasia. And he said, who's Princess Anastasia? Because he didn't know who Anastasia Romanova was. And now, yes, I do have a lot of questions. And I know the first one really should be, why did we have this conversation? But I just feel like the more important one is, why don't you know who Anastasia Romanova is? And possibly, which of us is the strange one here? Because I thought that the search for the lost Russian princess was one of those weird and wonderful historical moments that everybody knew about. So let me know in the comments if you know about Princess Anastasia, I guess. Also, if you're wondering how that conversation ended. I mean, I assumed invite was in quotes and we were kidnapping him. That seems aggressive. <laughs> you were gonna kill him! If he walks in and I kill him, that's different. No, now we're breaking hospitality rules. Now it's like it's a guest in your house and you have offered him harm. All right, I'll consider the kidnapping route. Okay. Thanks for your help. I like you. <laughs> I don't even know what just happened. So apparently I put the sleeves on the coat while I was ranting about Russian princesses and it was looking pretty good, but I don't know if you noticed this, it's missing a hood. The hood was both the most important piece of this costume and also the only piece I didn't have a pattern for. I'd been thinking about it a lot and I decided I needed to cut pieces that looked something like this. A little crooked house shape with a pizza slice cut out of the middle and a plank with a rhino horn. You know, just to get all four weird little corners on this weird little hood. But pretty much as soon as I got to looking at real fabric, uh, the house wasn't working, the pizza slice needed to be way bigger than I thought, the rhino horn was fine, but the plank was not. Or maybe it was. It kind of depended on how fat the house was, and you know, I don't know, most of it was wrong. So I decided to make the hood out of paper before I cut any more fabric. Honestly, the paper wasn't much easier to work with, but I had a lot more of it to waste, and I think I got my answers faster. It took me about an hour, 10 sheets of paper, half a roll of tape, and one visit from the cat to get to the point where I thought it was worth trying on my head. You know, as well as you can try on a bunch of paper. This might be awful. And then I got a pattern that looked like this. Pretty much the only thing I ended up keeping was the rhino horn. I cut it out, stitched it together, and, you know, I tried. The side corners were just too high, the back wasn't pointy enough, and it was just too tight around my face. So I made a new pattern, tried that on, and whew, so much better. So much more space for my face, which was really bothering me on the last one. I cut out six fronts and six backs, again, didn't notice until just now, and stitched the final hood together, then paused to attend the deep sea fishing event in my living room. Where are we gonna test our night to know? Right over here. Where did it go? Deep into the dark blue sea. Next, I decided to cut out these little yellow flappity flaps for the front of the coat. I cut six, I guess this is just my new favorite number, then sewed them together in pairs, turned them inside out, and ironed them flat. I'm usually too lazy to iron, but you're actually supposed to use the iron a lot when you sew, and I always end up loving how sharp things look as a result. So I guess I'm just saying I think we should all join together in telling future Gwen to iron everything in sight. You know, within reason. I marked three spots down the front of the coat, each about a water bottle length apart, sewed the flappy flaps into those spots, pointed away from the opening. They're going to point the other way eventually, but this builds anticipation and it will hide the raw edges at the end. Then I went back to the hood. If I'm being honest, I actually got back to it the night before to add some stiffener around the face and along the top seam, but I didn't film it. So just it, pretend you saw, I mean, forgive me. I pinned the hood to the neckline, and since I don't have any more pieces to attach, I went around every edge of the coat and folded the extra inch of fabric I had cut ages ago around to the back and pinned it all in place. I also folded the flappity flaps so they were pointing the right way now. I sewed the hood to the coat, looking good, then sewed all the way around the edges. Hood, one side of the front opening, around the bottom, up the other side of the front opening. All one seam, pretty long. I used my machine, and it only took me 15 minutes. Why am I telling you this? No reason. 
At this point, the coat looked finished, which meant that it almost was. I just needed to add the lining, which were all those pieces I told you weren't important right after I cut them out. I started with the hood, then put in the sleeve lining and pinned it until the end looked like the gaping maw of Charybdis, which I'm really only mentioning so that you all can give me some context. Which is more obscure, knowing that Anastasia was like the original Elvis and everyone thought that she had faked her death, or knowing about Charybdis, the ancient Greek sea monster that almost ate Odysseus on his way home from Troy? Charybdis is weirder, right? I pinned the lining into the back of the coat while Mr. Meows helped me hold all the pieces in place. Helping is a strong word, and I do draw the line when he starts pouncing on sharp objects, so I let him go. Lastly, I pinned the front lining in place, then started hand-stitching every piece of lining into the coat. Every piece. Reasons this was a good decision. I really like hand-stitching. It's one of those things that's so repetitive, it's soothing, and I can see my progress really easily. I always end up feeling like a proper, accomplished young lady. And I was trying to avoid there being a second line of stitching on the front of the coat, which there definitely would have been if I'd done this by machine. Why was hand-stitching maybe Possibly not the best idea? This took me eight hours. But I got to sit on the couch and watch movies all day, so... Finally, I added eight snaps down the front of the coat, and I bet you thought I was gonna say six, and I put a decorative button on each flap. And then, Six's coat was complete. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, please make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any of our behind the scenes. And of course, you can check out the musical here and more things I made over here. Fair salute! Woo!